Um, as you know, Dr. Paula Ehrlich uh, has been interested for many decades in all kinds of aspects of human predicament. So I conned them into uh, joining me and helping me with this, um, um, this endeavor looking at this uh, social problem that is actually changing the, the quality of life of around the planet. So here with us is uh, Professor Dr. Paul Ehrlich. It's great to be here. Uh, and uh, I was conned easily by Sandra. Uh, Sandra and David and Anne and I got to know each other because of a common interest in conservation. And uh, Sandra being a very skilled orthodontist, we occasionally talked about orthodontic problems. And she rather quickly convinced me that we're facing some horrendous problems in society that people are not really aware of. Uh, the symptoms I think most of us see, and that is more and more children are finding that braces are part of their natural lives. Every kid ends up almost having braces. Uh, more and more adults are starting to have sleeping problems, a special problem called sleep apnea being having their sleep disturbed at night. Uh, and uh, most, and many I should say, maybe even most children do a lot of mouth breathing. And mouth breathing, as I have learned, is very, very bad for you. So uh, this is creating a problem that's much more serious than the problem of crooked teeth, which is one of the symptoms of an epidemic, but it's not the most serious symptom. The most serious symptom of the epidemic uh, is the health consequences of disturbed sleep. And another one is, uh, by the standards of our society, poor appearance, which is one of the things that orthodontists, of course, have always been trying to help people get around. Uh, now, why are we in this situation? Very simple. Uh, we've had sort of a natural experiment in which we have totally changed the environment of many people in human society. That is particularly in the developed, the industrialized nations. As you all know, uh, what happens to us is a product of our genes interacting with our environments. Uh, but in this particular case, we know that the change has to be almost entirely due to change in the environment for reasons uh, I'd be happy to answer uh, in the question period. Uh, but what are the changes in the environment? Well, one main one is people don't chew like they used to chew. Nowadays, uh, if mothers are able to nurse, uh, very often uh, the children, maybe almost always, are first of all not nursed long enough uh, because the nursing itself involves exercising the jaw muscles. And um, when you wean the kids, you wean them to commercial soups, baby foods, and they then go on to eat a very soft diet like almost all of us do. How many of you at dinner last night took a hunk of uh, tough meat, stuck part of it in your mouth, sliced it off with a knife, and spent 10 minutes chewing it to get the nourishment out of it? We don't chew. We don't exercise our jaw muscles. So the problem that orthodontics basically faces today is jaws that have become too small, because we don't use them enough in industrialized society. And that leads to crowded teeth, because the teeth don't have any way to know or become small to fit in the jaw. We know from lots of studies that the human jaw has been shrinking in size for a long time, including just in the last couple of hundred years. So we have a serious problem there. On top of it, when we industrialized, we did something else and that is we moved indoors. We move indoors, we move to where allergens are concentrated, formaldehyde, dust mites, etc. That leads to stuffy noses. If our kids are indoors, and particularly if they're in, uh, uh, being taken care of in groups, they tend to have stuffy noses uh, for the early years of their lives. And we know from <clears throat> a lot of sources, including studies of monkeys, that if you stuff a child's nose, uh, their jaw development goes to hell. And so it's shown very clearly in experiments on rhesus monkeys that we would no longer do cruel experiments, but 
again, we're running sort of a cruel experiment on many of the children in our society uh, by not being much more careful about uh, controlling the things that give kids runny noses. So we have a very large environmental problem, one that could be relatively easy, easily fixed or at least ameliorated. Uh, and it's one where we need, of course, a lot more research because as you can see, a lot of the evidence for this is anecdotal, uh, but a lot of it's very solid. So um, I think I'll just turn you over to my orthodontist colleague uh, who really knows about this stuff. And uh, she can uh, rant at you for a while on her favorite topic. Sandy. Well, um, you know, being an orthodontist and you know, board certified and having um, close to 5,000 uh, records in, in my patient pool, I, I, I was seeing all, a lot of these problems and I was addressing them in a very traditional way, which is how I was trained and how you know, most of, ortho of orthodontists that are around, we look at crooked teeth, we're trained as dentists, so our, our main focus is the tooth. And we go in, we see uh, crooked teeth, and you know we deal with the symptom, and we make them straight. But you know, we know, and, and most lay people know that when you have braces and you have your teeth straightened, you will need retainers for the rest of your life, or the teeth will get crooked again. And that's basically the, the, the definition of dealing only with a symptom. Because if you're dealing with a symptom, but you're not addressing the, the root cause, then you know every time you deal with a symptom, the cause will create a new symptom, and that's what happens in, in orthodontists. And um, you know, almost 25 years of clinical practice, then uh, I, I, it came to the time to to treat my own children, and my son was having issues with his breathing, uh, teeth were, did not have enough room, and he was all starting to snore at night. He had a lot of um, issues with uh, you know being tired and, and we could see that he wasn't you know, thriving and I knew that there was a relationship between the way his teeth were you know developing and his his other symptoms so I started looking around and I found that there is a, a increasingly growing um, group of orthodontists that are looking into the the root cause and they're looking at the airway and they're looking at the size of the jaws more than just the symptom of the teeth not having enough room. So, you know, if we have a base to fit all these pieces on and the base is too small, then the pieces don't fit. And when we make the base bigger, then the pieces will have comfortable space to, to line up nicely. And that's exactly what happens with the teeth. If the jaws are too small, then the teeth get crooked. If we ap approach the, the issue that the jaws are small and we do something to help them develop when the jaws are growing, then the teeth, when they come in, will, you know, will have all the, the room that they need. And this is not only an aesthetic problem. It it's definitely has a, um, uh, an influence with the, with the health because the more room we have, the bet bigger our airway will be. And our airway, we find that it's, it's something that is causing a lot of misery in our society. We see it more in older people that lose tone as they get older and their tongue doesn't have enough room. And as they get older, they start snoring more and more and then they develop things like sleep apnea, which is when you're asleep and you interrupt your sleep um, by, by not being able to breathe. So you stop your breathing um, either for long periods or for just very short periods. But it's very, it's, it's damaging, and it's damaging to a child that's developing, and it's, a, like I said, it causes a lot of misery on, on adults that are not getting the rest that they're, they're supposed to. So I started looking for this new approach, and, th and that took me all the way to, to England, to where, where I met um, and I read the papers and the books of Dr. John Mew, which was uh, proposing a technique called orthotropics, which actually um, suggested we go in early, you know, even three, four years old, and when things are starting to develop negatively, we can go in and do some prevention, which is try to stop what's causing that development. And, you know, if there's anything that's causing damage, then we can address it before it actually, you know, the, the causes the, the problem. So that would be prevention. And prevention is so much more difficult than, than correction. So orthodontists, they see the teeth are crooked, 
and they correct them. But to prevent that, you have to be a step ahead. And in all health healthcare, it's always hard to, to prevent things. Uh, we, we don't give it the importance because the, the symptoms are not evident. You have to go in before you start noticing that something's wrong. But with kids, you can see early symptoms um, uh, very, very uh, early in life. Even from birth, you can see if a child is not breathing properly, if the mouth is kept open. You know, we are designed to breathe exclusively through our nose. And if you see that a baby has the mouth open, that should be an immediate sign of alarm. And that can be addressed that early. There's no teeth. And like Paul mentioned, you know, the breastfeeding and the way we are introduced to food, how we chew, that can all be prevention. And it's, it's um, you know, if, if we teach parents and, and people that care for children today to recognize those early symptoms, then we can stop a lot of misery from happening. And it's, I'm not just talking about saving money or saving the kids from having braces, like Paul said, you know, it's a, it's a rite of passage now where almost every teenager has to display this beautiful set of braces or Invisalign or anything that's, you know, making their teeth straight. So it's not about saving that, but really the, the, the correcting or the, the straightening of the teeth is not making our kids either more healthy or more attractive. Because if you really start observing the faces of the kids that, that wear braces, and this is something that people come up to me all the time, and after they, I've pointed out to them, they are incredibly impressed that they see it everywhere. As soon as the kids start wearing braces, their faces start looking worse. So as they're straightening the teeth and they're feeling like their smile is getting better, the face actually looks worse because orthodontics has a lot of uh, techniques that are um, uh, retrusive or that push things back. So braces, some of the time, if not all the time, they, they um, worsen the problem. They're not really addressing the size of the jaw. They're just trying to accommodate the pieces to a jaw that's already too small. And that is what we're trying to, to change. And I, I go around and these talks are, are a great gift for me because then I can go and, and inform uh, parents and anybody that has contact with, with growing um, children is that they can see if the kids have the mouth open, if, the, if they're not sleeping properly, like a child that is waking up and it's tired or you have to wake a child up, that's not normal. A child should be able to sleep well and wake up very energized. If this is not happening, that's a bad symptom. And this obviously also um, translates to kids not being able to, to learn as well. There's al already enough research showing that sleep and problems like attention deficit disorders and stuff like that are related. So that's another symptom. The symptoms in the face, if you see that the face is starting to get longer and narrower, um, that's a symptom. If you see the eyes have darkness under them, or if the white of the eyes is too, too prominent or, or too evident, then you know that the face is actually falling down. If we have a good posture when we are growing, then we're going to grow well. Like the jaws, they're designed to grow together as a set. But if we hang our mouth open for whatever reason, an allergy that we can't breathe well or just a habit or we're not strong enough because we're eating mush all the time and our muscles are not strong, to, to keep the jaw lifted, the, the bottom jaw, then we start hanging our jaw, and then things just, with gravity, they just start growing down and back, and that impinges on the size of the jaw, um, and the size of the airway, and the room that the tongue has to live in. So these are symptoms that if you look at them, and you um, address them early, and early can be as, as far as birth, but most parents start looking at their kids when they're three, four, five years old, and they see that something's not quite right. And orthodontists, we're a great profession. I mean, I'm, I'm still crazy about my profession. I'm passionate every day about what I do. And orthodontists, our, our job is to make people's life better. Uh, we do a lot of adults now, we treat children, but if we're not trained on how to use these techniques early enough. Most orthodontists are telling uh, parents to bring their kids after 10 years old. And after 10, it's very hard to do prevention because our upper jaw especially is almost fully grown by the time we're 10. 
So whatever space we have is what we have. So if we can go in at three and address the, the causes, then we would be a step ahead where we either won't need braces when they're late, um, teenagers or we will actually need something very mild, very little to maybe just straighten the tooth or something, but we will have enough room if we address these problems. Paul said something that um, I'd like to underline too. He talked a little bit about genetics and environment, and that's the, the ultimate question. We're always trying to figure out what's, what came first, the chicken or the egg, and is it something we inherit that, that our jaws are too small, or is it something that we caused by, by the environment that we lived in? In my practice, I had uh, parents come in so many times and say, you know, the problem with Susie's teeth is that she inherited daddy's big teeth and mommy's small jaws. And this is why we have crowding. And that was an idea, and it's, it's very logical for parents to think about this. But really, the more we look into it, the more we know that it's, it's more of an environmental problem. The, the studies that have been done or the observations that have been done for several centuries show us that people that live in more um, primitive environments, like they're eating harder foods and they're living outdoors, they're breathing through their nose exclusively, they're exercising a lot, they develop their jaws big enough to fit all the teeth. And you know, as we said before, also the airway. The airway is a tube uh, in that takes the air from the nose or the mouth into the lungs. And um, that too, we call it the airway. And if the jaws are too small, then the tongue doesn't have enough room to live in, and it has to live partially in the throat, which sometimes, you know, it-, it um, That's to block the airway. It blocks the airway, yeah. And, and it's what makes people snore at night. Like if you have a little vibration of your tongue, because, you know, when the air goes through, there's some tissue that is blocking it. Um, that's snoring, and the, the progression when snoring gets worse is when we get sleep apnea, which you know a lot of people are, are familiar with it, which is when you're asleep and your airway, the, the passage of air gets completely blocked and your airway um, gets um, obstructed and you stop breathing and and for and a few uh, seconds. And, and but yeah. that's very stressful. I it's mean, very stressful. It creates stre stress in your whole uh, body. Well, yeah, that, that, that ties this to cancer, to heart disease, to ADHD, to highway accidents, to depression. In other words, this is a, a, an entryway to many of the very serious problems of our society. So it ain't just whether you got crooked teeth or not, it's whether you die of cancer. Yeah, and all this has to do with the environment more than, than with the genetics. But Drew, so if, you, if you move one of the people from, as we've seen, if you move a, a family into a one of those from into an industrialized area from a, a primitive area, uh, you see the changes occurring Absolutely. in a single generation. Can't do anything with genetics mm -hmm. in a single generation. It's very important for me to, to clear up this idea that you know because our uncle, our grandfather, our, our sister has this problem, that means that it runs in the family. And I, I love parents that come in and, and the mom comes in and she says, oh, this all comes from dad's family. Or dad <laughs> comes in and says, it's all mommy's family because all the uncles in her uh, side have a big jaw like this. There's definitely a, a genetic component. We have a, a predetermination to grow in a certain way. But as you mentioned before, the studies from, um, from Harvard, they took genetically um, uh, same monkeys, rhesus monkeys, and they blocked their noses. And they all develop different malocclusions. And they all develop high Mal balance. Malocclusions? What are malocclusions? Well, that, those are problems with their bite. <laughs> the teeth too crowded, the not enough room. But malocclusion is what we go to the orthodontist for, to, to have it fixed. But you know, we, we can do some experiments, but we can also do a lot of observation. Like um, uh, George Catlin in the 1800s, he was studying the, the American Indians, which lived outdoors and had very low child mortality. So he was sent by you know, um, his society, he was a lawyer, and they sent him to investigate what were the Indians doing, the, the Native Americans, because they were not having as many babies die um, um, as, as the white population was. And he found that the, they called the, the whites um, not only pale face, they also called them uh, black mouths because they were hanging their mouth open all the time. And, and for him, it was so important that 
everything he studied about the, the Indians, the Native Americans, his, his uh, summary, he came back and the most important thing that he, he thought even of calling his, his book, um, shut your mouth and save your life because he thought that it was very important to keep our mouth closed for, for health. And he taught himself. He was a mouth breather and he taught himself to breathe through his nose because he recognized that that was um, changing even him as an adult into a healthier, healthier He human. reported, as I recall, that when Indian women stopped nursing, they would gently pinch their baby's lips closed and so to sort of train them uh, to keep their mouths closed. These are wonderful pictures. If you, look, if you buy our very expensive book, you'll see great pictures from Catlin's book of how he viewed this 150 years ago. What we were trying to do is bring all these uh, ideas to the forefront so that you know, parents realize that having the, the teeth straightened or, or having a child whose teeth are getting crooked it's not as innocuous as, uh, as we would think. It, 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 there is some um, serious problems that that, that uh, is, is announcing. We need uh, more training of orthodontists, among others, and also getting MDs and orthodontists together to solve the dual problem of sleep. There are huge problems with in sleep medicine now, and huge problems with the jaw, and they are interrelated. And so what we're hoping to do is get people working together on these. A lot of good-hearted people who could do much better if they work together more. Yeah, absolutely. Forward Dontics is what um, I'm trying to, to get to be known better because Forward Dontics is a technique where everything that we do um, encourages forward growth. And it's, uh, Forward Dontics can start from birth the way we wean our, our children, the way we introduce them to food, the way we um, uh, nurse them, and uh, you know, a lot of activities and, and that we're normally doing with our chi children, we can do them with a different um, purpose, or, or we can have an intention of helping the, the children develop everything forward. When we develop forward, we will have healthier airways, we will have more oxygen, and we will have less stress. And we know that stress causes all the, the ailments. Yeah, including we'll have smarter people, because school performance is hurt by stress, and so on. So yeah, I mean, sleep is, is one of the things that is uh, increasingly getting more attention in society. There's a, a fantastic book written by, by um, Matthew Walker from Berkeley. And he's really outlining all the yeah, ailments that are, are, are um, related to, to not sleeping um, as much and as soundly as, as we could. So sleep it ties directly into what you say, being smarter. Because if we sleep more, there's so many things. Um, if you read any of, of the books and the information that we have on sleep, you will realize that um, sleep is just a, a, a very, very important um, activity to 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 foster um, a, a happy life. You know, if you don't have good sleep, there's going to be so much misery in in your life. And we have adults that are struggling, and it's it's very difficult to address later in life. So, if you can you do anything, you got to sleep with a machine. It's terrible. Yeah, if you can do anything to keep your children from reaching that point later in life, it's it's money in the bank. It's just. Um, uh, incredibly um, fulfilling. I mean, this is an interesting issue in that it's a big global problem that's getting worse, but it's one of the big global problems where you can actually directly help your children and remove them from a lot of the threat. Yeah, JAWS is basically an empowering tool. It's, it's a, you'll have the information in our book to know what has gone wrong, why it, it went wrong, and what simple things you can do so that your kids don't end up in this huge predicament.